Hi there, this is a bit of a look at the Commodore 64 based Presenter 64, um, which is a video prompting system for a TV station or a studio based on a Commodore 64C. Um, so as you can see here, it's just a, a pretty much a stock standard Commodore 64C model um, with one or two little modifications. There's a badge put on the front here to replace the, the Commodore 64 badge. Uh, and then one of the joystick ports there as well. They've um, replaced the connector there with a, a unit that's got the little uh, screw-in uh, terminals on it. So you can actually affix your, your controller DB9 connector here with the actual screw connectors. Um, so that stops it falling out. Um, other than that, it's pretty much just a straight C64. Um, it's an English English based unit because it's got the uh, the pound symbol on the keyboard there but this one was actually sold in Australia um, and I rescued it from a, a pile that was going to be put into a skip quite a few years ago they were clearing out a, an old studio and we're going to dump this in the bin so I grabbed it before they <laughs> managed to do that um, that said I don't have the special reflective glass that mounts in front of the camera lens. There was a bracket that goes under the camera and um, some reflective glass that goes in front of the lens there that reflects the uh, the image of the text up uh, in front of the lens for the, the talent to read. That was being repurposed by the studio with uh, an iPad. So I didn't manage to grab that, but I've grabbed everything else pretty much. Um, and still in a working state. So if I turn on the, the C64, Um, you'll see both monitors are monochrome. This may actually look slightly blue on my camera here, but it is a, a monochrome Philips monitor. Um, and then there's another monitor here that comes with it as well. This is the actual on-camera unit that mounts sort of below the, the camera lens and is reflected on a piece of semi-transparent glass for the, the uh, studio talent to read. So you can see uh, horizontally the picture is flipped on that monitor. Um, I don't know where they've sourced these monitors from but it's, it looks like a little custom housing they've they've put it in there all it's got on the back is a little um, canon xlr style power connector and a, a bnc video input um, there's no power switch or anything on that unit um, and the philips monitor is just a standard monochrome um, composite video monitor as well so the cable that comes out of the c64 uh, is a Y configuration. So we've got one, one leg going off to the, the Philips monitor and the other one goes off to the little black uh, monitor that sits under the camera there. Just plug that back in. Um, so I'll load up the software and you can have a bit of a, a look at what the software does. As soon as I can find the power switch over here on the drive. So the drive's on. Um, discs that come with it. There is a copy of the Presenter 64 software, which is labelled as backup. So I don't know if there was an original uh, non-backup copy of this somewhere, but I don't have that. So I have a backup copy or this disc here with the software on it. And then there's two extra discs with some old scripts on there, um, including a script from Darren Hinch as well. So I think Darren must have done some teaching out at the, the uni uh, where this studio was. Pop the disk in, um, load the directory, drive comes on, got the directory, so we have a look at what's in there. So that's what's on the disk, there's your presenter software, oops, get that down, load that. As soon as I hit enter, you'll see it pop up on the screen. Eventually. Um, while that's loading there, I'll have a quick look at the, uh, the manual that comes with it. There's a whole lot of documentation that's come with this, including um, original purchase receipt, um, which shows what it was originally specced with, which was basically all this plus the the uh, bracket here for mounting under the camera, which allows you to mount the, uh, the the lens hood. That's got that piece of glass in it that I mentioned before. And this monitor here is the little black monitor that goes uh, under, the, under the piece of glass uh, in front of the camera there. 
and then obviously you've got your C64 system here which connects all that up. Um, it doesn't have a printer with it. I do have a couple of cables though. There we go, it looks like it's loaded. It's got a license number on it as well. Um, so now if we want to type some text, we just hit this little type text function key here and we'll start typing, blah, 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 blah. Paste to put a few extra spaces underneath. So then when we want to scroll that on the screen, hit the scroll function button and it goes into scroll mode. And then over here we've got a, a controller with uh, quite a long lead that would be given to the person in front of the camera to be able to scroll the, uh, the video text up or down on the screen. So if I press the up button, it scrolls up. Um, I didn't put much text on there, so it hasn't got much to play with, but you can see if I'm pressing the up and down button here. So up once, starts it and press it again to stop it. While it's scrolling as well, you can slow it down with this little up or down lever here or speed it up. And those settings as to how much it speeds it up, how much it slows it down, or what speed it's going to scroll at are, are configurable within the software as well. Um, so if we go back to oops, type text, that allows you to edit some more there. So I think if I hit Control L off the top of my head, there we go, load script. So if I take this disc out, try and put it back in its sleeve with one hand, grab one of the discs that's got some scripts on there, pop that in. Uh, now if we hit enter, it'll read the disc to see what's on there. There we go. Um, so there's the Hinch one. So if I hit enter on that, it'll load the Darren Hinch script. So looking at the text in this, it looks like Darren must have gone out to the uni where this was located and done a bit of uh, teaching of how to shoot some video footage or something like that, something to captivate the audience um, when you read what he's typed. Uh, so if I hit the scroll button down here, That's the start of it, and we can scroll it up, slow it down, stop it, make it go backwards, make it go forwards. There's a few spelling mistakes in that script, so someone's typed it up in a hurry. Think about the lighting, think about the sound, above all, think about the visuals, and that way you can't lose. That's life, I'm Darren Hinch. Um, that's the end of it, but there's quite a few old scripts on these discs that look like they've been created for some sort of promotional or training stuff. Um, so that's pretty much it. The documentation here is the manual. Um, there's a manual for the monitor as well, which is probably not much use. There's a folder here that someone's handwritten some shortcuts on for the software, but that's all in the manual anyway. Um, there's a promotional brochure in here from the, the people who sold it, uh, including a, a business card from a distributor in Canberra. Um, this guy's got the same name as the actual person who wrote the software by the looks of it too, so there's possibly some relationship there. Um, just installation instructions, some settings for configuring a printer, a letter when it was bought, um, and some warranty cards that were supposed to go back to Commodore in the UK that look like they've never been filled out. Um, so anyway, oh, and it, interestingly, this is the controller as well. It's got a Kodak brand on there, um, and if you do a bit of a Google image search on that, it looks like it was something that was used to control um, some old Kodak slide projectors once upon a time, but um, it's being used here to control this uh, software now. That's, uh, that's pretty much it. It's all up and running. Um, seems to work fine. It's got a few extra cables here, printer cables, an extension DB9 cable, um, power supplies for the 
Commodore computer and for the um, that's the power supply for the monitor there uh, and the disk drive as well. So um, let me know if you've got any questions about this. All right, thanks guys. Bye.